not about glorious moments. It's about keeping your team focused on a goal and motivated to do their best to achieve it, especially when the stakes are high. It's about laying the groundwork for others' success and then standing back and letting them shine. It's really about trusting your team and moving forward with them. Today, we'll be introducing to you one such leader who believes in his team and who believes in growing with them. Hello and welcome to this very insightful episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories. And they say that one conversation can shift the direction of change forever. So with me, Isha Bhalla, let's get this very interesting conversation started where we will entertain you, our viewers, while sipping our chai. And this is a way for us to get to know our leader better. So let me introduce to you our leader for today, Mr. Rajat Yadav, Head IT, CNH Industrial. A very, very warm welcome to you, Rajat. We look forward to having you. Thank you, Isha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isha and uh, Economic Times for uh, giving me this opportunity. It is my pleasure to be here. I'd love to share with our viewers about this leader who's a technology graduate in computer science and postgraduate in business administration from MDI Gurgaon, believes in learning at all times, which is why he is still pursuing a postgraduate program in data science and machine learning from IIT Roorkee. He's done various professional certifications when it comes to IT operations, business analysis, technology, specifically with Microsoft. And as a head at, of IT at CNH Industrial, he is leading both business units, be it New Holland Agriculture and Case Construction, where he has led various digital transformation programs when it comes to sales acceleration, manufacturing automation, including IoT. In the past, he has worked in several business segments like Alcobev, FMCG, and core technology with product organizations like Microsoft. So you can imagine we have a lot to learn from him. So let me now begin by asking you a little bit about your foundation years. What was it like growing up for you? Tell us a little bit about your parents, your siblings, your friends, those who have stayed close till date. Thank you, Isha. This was a long introduction. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> so um, for me, it is, it, so I was born and brought up in Delhi. Uh, I studied in the Air Force School here. Uh, and of course, being in the uh, school where you, you get to teach, you get to learn discipline, uh, you are taught to be designed to be humble, courteous, and, and really walking with the discipline in your hand. So I think I really cherish this attitude and uh, behavior I got from there. And that's my base, I would say. Fantastic. You know, you mentioned about your schooling being at Air Force School. So how would you say you were different from other kids uh, your age? I was not different. I was like any other child. I was like any other kid. So I, I would be very frank. Um, but yes, there's one thing which, which I really liked and, and I still go ahead and cherish with is my inquisitiveness. I really like to know how the stuff works. How does, how does a particular thing which is happening, uh, how, how do I really get to know the, the stuff behind that? And it is so that when I was a child, uh, I used to just get the things disassembled as I used to get them. So I would pick up a screwdriver and open the toy inside out to understand how it is working and, and what's really behind it. Of course, I had to pay a price for this, for this mischief. And of course, that's a good amount of scolding from my parents. Right. We're so very glad that you're sharing these fun anecdotes with us. So we, we definitely know not to leave you in a room full of toys next. But uh, jokes apart, we'd love to know what your college days were like and what uh, if you can share a couple of instances with us that have really shaped you or share a couple of memories with us that have had a positive impact on you. Sure. So that's, that's really close to me. Uh, the college days are, are really close to everyone every individual. And I was, uh, as I said, I am an engineering graduate. Uh, so I was part of the hostel and you know the fun we have in the hostel. So, so it was really nice uh, studying. So studying is one part of it when you are in the college, but I believe the learning is not just in the classroom. Uh, it's, it's, it's really helps, it really helps to shape up your career. If you are close to your friends, your peers, your, your, the people who, who can really shape you in terms of the knowledge that you get. So I really believe that you should be open uh, and willing to explore uh, with your peer students and outside the coursework 
uh, to learn more practical concepts, uh, not just the theory part of it. And and uh, you know it helps you to become wiser and and really helps in your career uh, future as well. Absolutely. So making sure that one explores and uh, hostel life does teach you a lot of that. And uh, you know this is what takes me to my next question. Actually, we'd love to know how you have evolved, especially when I talk about your professional journey. Sure. Uh, again, uh, it's been a little bit of ups and downs, uh, like anyone would have it. Uh, so my career is, is of course, mix of experience, as you as you also introduced. Um, I started with a tech role, core role in, in the technology in my initial days that was into databases. And everyone knows about databases now. Technology is so much in everyone. You, you talk to any guy, he will teach you technology. So um, I was part of the IT services organization to begin with. And then I moved ahead quickly with the product organization like you know the Microsoft I explained, where I really wanted to gain technical depth. Uh, so that's the place where it really helped me to shape up my skills and my career, the confidence within me. Uh, I think that's the place where I really started to understand what core technology is and it, how it helps the businesses. I think that's, that was one turning point in my career. Uh, but soon I realized I really wanted to work with the business, helping them with, uh, to be successful with the technology because that's the core, uh, you know, the, the, anything you do in digital IT technology is to achieve something, a business goal. And I moved on. So I moved on from uh, there and I moved to the FMCG. Uh, and, and there I did some global roles, um, really helped uh, understand the business there. Uh, and then finally I moved to the another industry, you know, I couldn't stay back there. I, I thought there is more to learn. I moved into Elcobev, which was a very different uh, industry altogether. You know, in India, Alcobev is, is, is kind of a taboo. So uh, it was great learning there, understanding how the whole industry works, how the organization works, and, and the big value chain behind it. Um, so that's, that was an interesting move. And then there was something more I wanted to do. I moved on and, and got into the current uh, organization where I am, which is neither FMCG, uh, no technology. It is more of an automotive and uh, capital goods organization, uh, which is close to auto, but but it's into agriculture and construction domain. So it's been a lot of experiences, which really helped me to understand the whole industries that I work with. And of course, the technology, how it helps uh, them to achieve the goals they have. Right. You know, you've shared with us how driven you've always been to learn more, to experience and explore so much more. And this is what makes me ask you, what are those few leadership traits that you really believe can make a person successful? And what are those leadership traits that you feel are so very important to you? I think um, the, the leadership itself is, is, is a wide subject. Again, um, personally, I believe uh, being humble, being focused and taking the ownership to execute the, the stuff with passion is what I believe is leadership. In simple terms, I'm not complicating it, uh, but I think it's, it's what I, I really like to be, uh, be nice to people. So I, I, I read somewhere and you know I really follow that. It is nice to be important, but it is more important to be nice. So uh, I think be nice to your team, be nice to people around, uh, and at the same time, be assertive of what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Uh, I think that's what I would say. Um, it doesn't really matter how intelligent you are, what pedigree you carry from, uh, but it, it also matters uh, that you have a winning attitude and really zeal to be successful and have the right behaviors to be there. I think that's the leadership for me. So making sure that you're there for your team, uh, have qualities that make people believe in you so much more. Thanks for that. And, you know, if I was to ask you, if our viewers were to meet you in person, now what are those couple of things that they would really, really enjoy about you and that would really attract them towards you and they would love to be a part of your team? Sure. Uh, see, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a transparent, open person. I, I don't really want to, I, I don't really like to mince with, with people be what you are and people will automatically get close to you. Uh, I think that's what I, I believe in. Uh, I am approachable. Uh, I am always willing to help people who are really in, in help, uh, they need help. And, and that's what I would say, uh, that's me. 
I'm sure that your team members have a lot to look forward to and learn from you. So here, I'd like to ask something about teamwork because we definitely do believe that great things in business can't just be done by one person. It does require a team. So how is it that you lead your team and where did you pick up your team skills? Um, see, uh, as you said, the teamwork is important, not, not just in the organization, but everywhere in your life. Um, I believe in, in providing and giving the autonomy to the team uh, without doing it, going into micromanagement of things. But of course, at the same time, be close to them, have a regular touch, give them guidance wherever it is needed and support them wherever they need. Uh, don't just try to give them the whole uh, journey uh, and, and the path, exact path. Let them also try to explore and of course be there if they, they, they falter around. I think that's what uh, I, how I lead the team. And um, one of the things which I, I say is, and I learned from, this leader, from the leaders is that um, the team really needs to be knit, closely knit and, and keep them engaged together. If there are differences within the team, I'm sure there will be uh, opportunities to improve there in the teamwork. Right, so really making sure that the team is a close knit and making sure that you hear them out at all times. You know, uh, we always have uh, a small line to cross when it comes to that work-life balance. So I'd like to ask you, how is it that you maintain that work-life balance, especially in today's day? That's the that's, uh, most important question for everyone. Uh, people like me who work on technology, uh, helping the organization. So. You, you have to be around all day and night. Uh, there are businesses running in the background which you want to ensure they don't fail. They, they, they are always running. Uh, I, I really admire one of the global leaders uh, whom, whom I actually, uh, whom I read about. And, and he says, uh, life is seven days a week. Uh, and and it's, it's simply saying, uh, there is no work-life balance. Uh, there is no work life and there is no personal life. It is just life. So, so you really need to adapt and adjust both the work and life together. Uh, in the current world, you cannot differentiate between work and a life and a balance between them. Uh, really, they, they get close to each other. And the sooner you realize, the better you really take control of this. Um, and, and that's okay. You, you have to really... Uh, understand that while you are at work, there might be some important items you want to cover during the day, which is, which is close to your life. And, and the same way, when you are out uh, with your family, with your friends, there might be some emergency where we, you, you need to get into for your work. It's just that you need to accept that. Um, you need to make it aware to your closer ones. And I think that's what work life is. You know, you've put it uh, so very beautifully and taking that quote and uh, making sure that you learn from that. So really prioritizing what is important at that time and giving the due importance there. So if I was to ask you that, uh, you know, you always want your time or that space of work. So what is it that you enjoy doing in your special time? That's just yours. Uh, do you mean at work? I mean, off work. When you're not working, was it, what is it that you like to indulge in or any hobbies? What is it that really interests you? Yes, so uh, as I said, I, I really liked the core technology stuff since the beginning. Uh, I used to open up the toys. Uh, I wanted to know what's in there. And I still do that, not on toys, but sometimes I, 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 I you know, read about the technology stuff. I read about the automobiles. Sometimes I would open up my hood of my car and try to explore what's in there. But of course, uh, being, being with the limit that what, what I need to do, uh, not, some, not really messing up with something. So I'm really a DIY person. I, I like to do stuff by myself. Uh, sometimes I really get into to do some basic carpentry stuff. I've got a lot of tools at my home, uh, which I really like exploring. Uh, I might create something out of the free time I have. Uh, it, it might not be the best thing, but of course it gives me satisfaction and it really keeps me engaged uh, at that time. So I, I think that's what uh, my, my pastime is. 
So I now know that if we ever have to send you a gift, it should be a DIY kit. But thank you so very much. And, you know, finally, I'd love uh, to listen and make sure that our viewers get to learn from you. So, you know, you have continued to invest in your skills and you made sure that you invest in yourself, keep growing, keep the learning process on with these continuous uh, programs that you do. So if you were to share any one message for our uh, youth, what would that message be? How can they really... Uh, take the next level in their life? See, uh, as I was saying, uh, <clears throat> people really need to uh, understand that it's not how intelligent and, and best minds that you have. Uh, it is more about really keeping yourself up to date. Um, in the core technology area, uh, you really need to be with the pace and be relevant. Otherwise, you are outdated and, and then, of course, you know, it's difficult to find a place. Um, I keep reading the latest stuff wherever possible, whatever time I get. Sometimes when I'm taking an interview, there's a new thing I realize. It's, it's always good to know. Uh, and also, you know, keep on upgrading yourself from time to time. So I make a target every year that I complete at least few courses, few certification, which adds value to me, to my profile, uh, which can help me even be better at work and also be valuable to the organization in terms of the value that I want to provide there. I think that's very important uh, for, for the people in technology to be, to be always updated. There's one, just one more thing I would uh, offer as an advice is that uh, it is actually the behavior and attitude which, which really define a person, uh, where you, you want to actually uh, come up and say that you own the stuff and you, you move, move it, move the needle to deliver it with the ownership, not just having a part of it. I think that's what uh, really leaders look for, that you not only take care of your staff, but also for your peers, someone in health, and that's when you get the confidence for on your leaders as well as with your peers. I think uh, all our viewers have had so much to learn from you. And, you know, now, thank you so sure. very much for joining us. It has been such a pleasure getting to know you, Mr. Yadav. And I'm sure that our viewers have had a fabulous time learning and engaging and making sure this gives them an opportunity to really get to know what learning is all about. So on behalf of the entire team at ET Edge, I'd like to thank you for joining us and thank our viewers for watching the show. Thank you so much, Isha. Uh, it was really nice uh, conversing with you and thank you, ET, for hosting me.